Hello, in this video we're going to be talking about the tangent line. Uh, and the definition of the tangent line I have written right here is that the tangent line to the curve y equals f of x, so that's just going to be some function, at the point, now the point is p and it has the coordinate pair a comma f of a, you can think of this as um, x comma y if it makes you feel any better, but we're going to use a comma f of a, is the line through p with slope, and then we have this slope here. Now m, m is the the letter we use to represent slope, so that you've probably seen before. You may not have seen this before. Okay, uh, we'll talk about this more in probably the second half of this video. So we'll we'll just kind of ignore this part for now. But let's uh, let's take a look at a graph, and then let's draw a tangent line. Okay, so we have this graph right here. Okay, so here's my f of x. Okay, so here's f of x, and I need a point p, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose how about this one. All right, this is going to be my point p. Now I want to draw a tangent line to this, so let me draw the tangent line first and then we'll talk about what it is. Now again, this is my point p. I think, let's say this is about negative 2, comma, I don't know, maybe negative 3, so that's my point p. So back up at the definition, it is a line, okay, a tangent line, uh, through the point P that has a particular slope. And again, the definition of the slope is right here. Okay, going to wait still on this part, um, but I want to know how to form this line. Like, why is this the tangent line? So let's pair up P with another point. Let's say about this point right here. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect these two points, so point P and then this other point right here, uh, with a line. Now I actually erase the point negative 2, negative 3, so uh, we can get in the way of this line. Okay, but this line right here, uh, we call this a secant line. Okay, a secant line is a line that connects two points on a graph. And one thing that I'm interested in is the slope of this secant line right here. Now we know how to find the slope. Okay, we again we use the letter m and that's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, this is just kind of a quick review on finding the slope at two points. Okay, so this point um, I think I had negative 2 comma negative 3 and then this one was 1 comma 2. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this one y2 and this one x2. Then this one will be x1 and then y1. So we're going to get 2 minus negative 3 over and then x2 which is 1 minus and then x1 which is negative 2 Okay, so that's going to be 5 over 3. So the slope of this line right here has slope, or will be 5 over 3, or 5 thirds, which makes sense because going from this point to this point, let's see, do we go, because of rise over run, so 5 over 3, do we go up 5? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then over 3, 1, 2, 3, and it lands us right on that second point. Okay, but what does this secant line have to do with this tangent line? Okay, I'm going to erase uh, most of this stuff right here and just keep the graph and the lines. Okay, what I'm going to do next is, okay, this, again, this is our point P, so this stays fixed. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this point and I'm going to move it a little bit closer. Uh, so about right here. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the secant line connecting the point P to this point. Okay, so now we have another secant line. All right, that's fine. So now let's take another point. Um, let's say maybe right here. All right, what is that secant line going to look like? Okay, so are you seeing the pattern yet? And it looks like as this point right here, as it gets closer and closer to my point P, 
Okay, look what happens to these secant lines. The secant lines look like they are actually getting closer and closer to what we uh, call the tangent line. So let me take one more. Okay, and let's get let's get pretty close. So let's take maybe a point like right there. So here's my new secant line, uh, con the line connecting these two points right here. So here's my point P again. There we go. And here we go. So again, as the point's getting closer and closer to P, we can see that the secant lines look like they're getting closer and closer to my tangent line. Now, if you're familiar with how limits work and how let's each one of these secant lines had a slope, we can call this like slope 1, and we can call this slope 2, slope 3, slope 4. And if you take the limit of these slopes, because if we keep calculating the slopes of all these secant lines, we see the pattern that the secant line is going to eventually kind of turn into the tangent line, that if we take the limit of all these slopes, eventually we're going to get the slope of the secant line. Or, I'm sorry, the slope of the tangent line. Okay, so we have the same graph up. Um, tick marks are a little bit different, because I did change the function a little bit. But here is that tangent line we were just talking about. So let's go find that first secant line we were talking about. Okay, so here's that first secant line. Now notice what happens again as this point gets closer and closer to my point P, which is right here. What happens to these secant lines? Okay, so notice the point is getting closer and closer to P. And you can see that these secant lines are getting closer and closer to the tangent line until right when that point gets to P, and I stopped it just a little bit shy of it, but it becomes the tangent line. So if we go back to our picture right here, all right, we had this definition of the slope, which is a limit okay, of f of x minus f of a over x minus a. What is this? Okay, This is the slope. Because remember, you can treat this as, um, let's change colors here. You can treat this as y2 minus y1, and then this could be x2 minus x1. So we're just taking two points, so every time you evaluate this, it's going to be the slope of a secant line. But as x approaches a, in other words, as this second point, okay, these second points here, as they keep getting closer and closer to a, the slope, which is right here, is going to approach or get really, really close to the slope of the tangent line. Now, since we're talking about limits to calculate the slope of this tangent line that we have down here, well, we notice that as we are calculating slopes of all these secant lines right here, we are hoping that as the secant lines get closer and closer to the tangent line, that one, they would become the same line, and that the slopes would turn into the same, so that we would know the slope of the tangent line. Okay, so what, ha like, why isn't, why can't the, uh, all these secant lines, why can't they go down here? Like, why? Why is this, again, the tangent line? So notice that all of these points are on the right-hand side of P. So what happens if this point goes past P, like slightly past P? So let's do that. Okay, so I just left this one secant line right here, because that's slightly this point right here, slightly to the right of P. So what happens when we go slightly to the left of P? So let's take a point like right here. Let's connect these two to create the secant line. So can you see what happened when you take a point slightly to the left? The line now actually went below the tangent line. So if it's, we're kind of like trapping it now. As this point right here, as that point gets closer and closer to P, these lines are going to go up. And when this point on the right-hand side gets closer and closer to P, these lines are going to go down. And where are they going to meet? exactly at the tangent line.